So what's going on YouTube my name is Mehul and welcome to another angular tutorial in which we're gonna discuss how to actually deploy your angular application whatever you have created to an actual server right so right now what you're gonna see is you use ng serve to serve your angular files and stuff and you know hot reloading and all that stuff but what happens essentially is angular is front-end right at least what we have done so far so angular consists of nothing but an html file that is index.html or other files as well and javascript so these are static files right they do not really need a server on their own they can be served through your main server only so on production builds you only have a single server which handles backend and serves these frontend files right so when you build a production build for angular let's see how you go through setting up that server and stuff like that so before starting with that I'm gonna show you the basic application by using ng serve and I'm gonna give a proxy config or proxy config .json, which basically allows us to actually redirect all the requests which hit this URL by the way we are running it at localhost 4200 right so any request I make to API and whatever here it goes is actually automatically transferred transferred to this target, which is actually our backend server, right? Which happens to be the server which would eventually be the single server, right? We don't need this server on production, but we do need this server. So what happens is, for example, if I write API123, it would be automatically transferred to API slash 123. You can know more about this by going back into the playlist of angular 6 and uh, finding this proxy sending proxy tutorial right i do have that covered right <clears throat> and by the way this project is not really angular 6 anymore i just upgraded it to angular 7 right so these guys are <laughs> like releasing a framework a new framework every you know six months so it's hard to keep up with the numbers now so it's angular CLI 7 and angular is also 7 right so there we are so we're gonna go back to server and start our server as well which basically just says up but actually starts a server at localhost 1234 right for this API endpoint stuff to work because we have login and stuff there all right so now if you go to localhost 4200 right and uh, see this is basically what we prepared inside our angular series if you want to know how this is prepared just go back there find the link in the description and you would be able to develop such an application i'm just going to log in with admin admin because that's a set username so you can see that we have this uh, code kind of thing set so i can say um, i like angular 6 or 7 rather right and it's saved right i reload it's not really in the local storage it's on the session storage of express right so obviously you can make this as the database also so if i just show you the server you can see we are storing the code right here inside the session right so obviously this would be removed when i log out because i'm using in memory session of the user not really the session which uh, you know um, stores data on the database so you might want to do that on a production obviously you would be doing that but for the sake of simplicity it just works like this right cool so now how do we generate a bundle out of this well if you take a look inside package.json of angular it's pretty simple you can see that the build command is basically ng build with a flag of production right you also want to have like tests going on on your angular application but since this application is very small i'm not writing any tests for them but rather i'm just going to build it and uh, to build it what you have to do is just write npm run build which would eventually run this ng build product uh, production <coughs> command right which what it does is minifies all the files you know chunks every javascript file into 
as less files as possible creates a hash of file append to it append to the that to the file name so that your browser does not cache your javascript stuff like that so depending on your application size it might take some time to create production builds because you know these are optimized builds so angular wants to serve you the best but since this is a small application it might it should be done yeah so it's just synchronized with what i was saying so now once you have done this and as a matter of fact what you can see is our styles here we have 114 bytes but here we have like 16.7 kilobytes of information right so you can see that it's almost I don't know a hundred times compression for styles that's that's way too much but anyway you get a lot of compression done on production builds right and uh, yeah once you have done that what you would see is you have a distribution folder here now everything right here inside this folder except this distribution folder is not required on production right so what angular has done is it has provided you a distribution folder which consists of the only files you need to run on production so what you have to do essentially is serve this distribution folder somehow through your ang through your node server right so what i'm going to do next is just open my index.js file and go through how i am serving that so what we're going to do is start off with the very first line we create an express server body parser to accept json responses right here session to create an in-memory session on production typically you would have a you know a session storage using mongo so that your session persists if you restart the server and stuff like that and um, this is path for resolving paths right then you use session to actually initialize the session body parser stuff like that then what you do is use express.static to serve static files and what are static files well static files are basically the files which do not really change unless you you know you know you get the idea static files the files sitting on your file system which you do not expect to change like your javascript files or your images or your css files you know stuff like that txt files html files even html files can be considered as static files right so what you're going to do is serve your static files using express only but on a production you might want it to serve through nginx <clears throat> i'm not really going to set up nginx right here on my mac because of obvious reasons you know i can just skip over it but on production you would automatically have nginx configured for you and uh, you have to serve these static files through nginx right so typically it would more or less look like if process.env.node env is production that means you have to serve it through nginx right because this would be production on your production server right it won't be production on your system on which you're developing it right otherwise you can obviously use this thing if you just want to test it out right how the production builds look like so coming back to the point then we have our APIs for the Angular application to use. So these are some of the APIs. You can see we have slash API, which redirects our API calls from the front end, which redirected our API calls from the front end to this URL. But the benefit is that we do not really need to change the code or anything because of proxy config. So our SRC, what it did is if I take a look inside, let's say the login component, you can see that if I get this user details method, um, we have this HTTP POST request going to relative URL, right? So what we are doing here is uh, we are performing a request to on a development server API auth, which converts to localhost one two three four API auth. But since on production this server serves the files anyway so this request is correct right so you do not really need to change the code so that's that and all that stuff follows then on the final note if none of these rules matches we want angular to handle this 
especially the get request. So any get request which we get on the server, we're just going to return our index.html file for Angular to handle it because Angular has been doing routing and stuff, so it knows how to handle um, our website. Right? Finally, we start the server by listening on port 1234 and console logging up. Right? So now what you can do is actually just disable your, um, you know, the development build and restart your server and you're going to see up. You can go to 1234 now, which actually serves your production build. And uh, just as a matter of fact, um, obviously I have shown you the compression, so it does not really matter. I just wanted to show you that. But you can see now that it pretty much works in a similar way. But it's now on production, faster, better, and you know, just like you, you should do stuff, right? So this was a basic tutorial on setting up production builds using Angular and Node. So yeah, I guess that's all for this one. And if you like this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon for more videos. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you then in some other video. And one more thing, if you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to receive instant notifications.